Theater of Light is the most complicated Roblox fighting game I've ever played, and probably one of the hardest on the platform, all because of the crazy mechanics it has, and how complicated doing combos or even using different moves can be. I'm absolutely garbage at it, and I've only won either against people who are even more garbage than me, or while using what is arguably the most braindead class in the entire game. And yet, despite my pretty bad win-to-loss ratio, I still love this game, and I'm still going to keep playing it despite its low player count. And you know what? You should check it out too. Here's why Theater of Light is honestly pretty damn cool. To start off, let's explain what the game is. Theater of Light is a Roblox fighting game that sits around a stagnant player count of around 100 players. It has a fairly large roster of about 9 characters, and each one is completely unique in both the kind of roles they fill and their movesets. There is no ranked mode or any other kind of game mode, and each fight is done one-on-one -on -one by queuing up in the lobby. Four people can fight in two one-on-one -on -one matches each, though server sizes are six, and there's a limit on how many can fight at a time for some ungodly reason. The game's fighting is fairly fast-paced, and the game does have stun and combos. You can dash, but blocking, on the other hand, is a thing that's reserved for only some characters, and you have a special move you do by pressing space. Now, that's the most basic mechanics out of the way, so time for the more complex, kind of crazy stuff. Down here you have three buttons. These are your moves. M1 does your basic attack, Q does your first special, and E does your second special. However, you don't have just three moves. In fact, each character has a crap ton that I can't even count. How is this possible? Well, it's because this game uses inputs, a concept that's basically died on Roblox ever since Blackmagic 1 came out. What this means is that by pressing a certain combination of these three keys, or holding one of these keys longer than normal, you can do a special kind of attack. For example, let's look at Samurai Special 1. By simply pressing it, you'll do a slice forward that launches your opponent into the air and stuns them, having a sweet spot where it'll let you start a combo if you hit your opponent from a certain distance. However, if you hold the move, you instead prepare a counter that stuns your opponent and does a little bit of staggered damage, another mechanic I'll explain later. And at a certain thing called your emotion level, which I'll also explain later, you can press special 1 and then hold attack to do another kind of counter which doubles your opponent's damage and reflects it back at them, dealing ridiculous damage most of the time. All of that from one button being pressed in a different kind of way, or combined with another kind of key. This isn't something unique to just this one character either, because you can look at pretty much any character's move list and they'll usually have a similar amount of inputs available. It adds a lot of complexity to combos that really changes up the game, and also throws in some difficulty since it's way more difficult than just pressing 1 through 4 like you would in a game like Project Smash or The Strongest Battlegrounds. Now, I'll explain the health bar situation. There's two bars. The red one is your health. If it runs out, you die. Simple. The second one is Stagger. This bar also takes damage, and some things like Deflex or some of Ranger's moves will deal Stagger damage as well. When this bar runs out, the person hit gets stunned for a really, really long time. However, this stun ends once someone is hit and their combo ends, or after one turn as it would be called in game terms. This lets you set up certain moves that have a lot of startup, or simply just lets you get another combo in. Some movesets benefit from it a lot more than others, but it's pretty useful nonetheless. The other mechanic I promised to explain later was emotion level. Basically, as the fight goes on and you deal damage and take it, this goes up. As it goes up, more moves are unlocked for you to use, and these bonuses called cards that you select before the match will also be activated, giving you various small buffs, or bigger buffs with some debuffs mixed in, depending on what you chose. One example is Predation. It's unlocked at level 2 and it reduces your max HP by 25% but also gives you extra haste and strength, which are buffs that I believe increase your dash distance or speed and your damage respectively. I don't actually know. Bouncing off of that, there's a crap ton of statuses in the game, such as burn, bleed, and fragile, and more that you're gonna figure out as you play the game. The emotion level mechanic is a pretty interesting way to make the fight more intense as it goes on, 
forcing you to start with pretty basic moves before you eventually move on to having your entire move sets and your cards unlocked at the very end of the fight, letting you access a lot of more options and deal a lot more damage as well. Next up, the light mechanic. Some moves require light to be used, and once it's lost, you regain it after every turn. A turn is basically whenever you do a combo on someone, or someone does a combo on you, and the combo ends. After that combo ends, the person hit gets iframes for a bit, and both players gain light, as well as any turn-based effects being activated, like burn dealing its damage and then getting cut in half. This mechanic is useful for stopping any one combo from going on for too long, and also sort of forces both players to get in close to hit the other person to regain light, so that they can actually use moves. The interesting thing about this, that might be an unintended or intended consequence of the light mechanic, is that there's no such thing as cooldown stalling in this game. In games such as the strongest battlegrounds, if you're playing a character such as Sonic or Genos, you're actively encouraged to run away after your moves go on cooldown, so that you can use your moves again from a safe distance. However, in this game, since you don't have a cooldown and you regenerate your moves by hitting people, you're encouraged to actually get in, and running away is not a very viable option because you're not going to have your moves if you try doing that. It's a different story if you're a zoner and you have lights, but that's a different case. For the most part, you actually have to hit people to deal damage. That, I believe, is one of the main things that make this game pretty cool and fun to play, because you don't see a lot of people who run away the whole match. That might also just be a consequence of this game not having a large player count, but I digress. Another thing I want to really talk about when I call this game the most complicated game on Roblox is that the combos are very, very complex. For example, the one I'm struggling with right now is Samurai. The problem with him is that with his main attack, aka the one where you press M1, you have two parts. The first slash, which knocks your opponent away, and a second slash, which is supposed to catch them. Normally, these two moves will combo into each other, but because of some ping issues, you'll sometimes need to time the second slash to catch your opponent after they're launched back. This can make it very difficult to actually combo with the move, and it leads to a lot of dropping of the combos of Samurai, which can be extremely annoying. Just have a lot of different moves you have to press in order to make the combo happen. For example, with Vigilante, the one character where I've actually managed to make a pretty decent combo, I have to do my main attack three times, then I have to press space to do my special attack and down slam them, then I have to press my main attack once, and then I have to start mashing Q to do the kick move, and then eventually at the end of the combo, I press Q one more time, and then it'll do the rapid slashes move. This combo involves quite a bit of button pressing, and it's a lot more complicated than other games where you have simple combo extenders by pressing M1 and then doing another move and then pressing M1 a couple more times. The fact that each combo has its own different kind of skills you need is very complicated and honestly makes it very hard to actually get into the game because of how difficult it is to learn each individual combo. Other games do not have that combo difficulty which makes it pretty difficult to go and pick this game up because of just how difficult it is to do the combos that are the crux behind this entire game's combat. Other than that, each character is incredibly gimmicky with their own archetypes, own way to play, and own kind of movesets. Let's take Gunner, for example. Gunner is a textbook zoner. You make distance, you shoot bullets, and you have a bunch of ranged moves that either help you make distance or punish people for getting too close to you and then let you ride in the gap once again so that you can keep on shooting your opponent from a distance. However, there's also another character called Assassin who basically has zero normal movement speed but has really good dashes that let them catch up to people quickly. They also only have like two moves that are offensive and they don't have any big drawn out combos. However, they have a really good dash move that straight up confirms into their basic attack and both do a crazy amount of damage that basically carries the entire moveset. It's really crazy, honestly. Each character is so unique, and there's so many different playstyles offered by developers, that you're basically going to find something that suits your interests. For me, it's Samurai, Vigilante, and Assassin. Those are my three mains, and they're all pretty damn fun to play, because of how well-designed each character is. 
I won't call it a balancing of this game particularly flawless because there are some issues with it, but other than those exceptions that still have ways to counter them, I feel like this game's balancing is pretty decent as well. In any ways, it is in public testing, so there is a lot of room for improvement left over. With that, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you want to know more, you can check out the game yourself. The link to the game will be in the description and the pinned comment down below. Go check it out later. To wrap things up, Theater of Light is a very unique game, with its own kind of gimmicks, combo difficulty, and incredibly unique roster filled with all kinds of characters that can all do their own kinds of things. It's an incredible game with so much depth to it that even I, who normally get obsessed with fighting games and figure out everything really quickly, can't figure out all of the stuff here. Honestly, go check it out for yourself. You might drop it later on because of how difficult it is to get into the game, but once you've figured out everything, it becomes really fun to play, and there's a lot of fun interactions that you can do with this game. Honestly, this game does not deserve to have a player count this low, and I'd really recommend you check it out. That's all for this video, I'm Noob Eternally, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I make a lot of stuff like this regularly, and I'll see you next time in another video. Have a good day, and bye.